welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on us, ABC3. Time for us to talk technology, and you know who our go-to guy is when it comes to that. It's Grant Hines. Now, we know that earlier on uh, during the pandemic, much was still unknown when it comes to the virus, especially regarding the transmission of the COVID-19 uh, 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 virus. And, of course, exposure risk and all of that was all uh, fairly unknown. And furthermore, there simply wasn't enough trained staff to conduct the necessary testing and screening procedures. We were all just running around not knowing where to look and adding to the already strained testing capacity in the United States. Uh, well, that was all a mess as well. Accordingly, many healthcare systems started utilizing robots and automated systems to address these needs, which is such an interesting world altogether. And Grant Hines joins us now uh, to talk about the essential workers behind our fight against the coronavirus that aren't even human. <laughs> these essential workers aren't even human. Well, there's so many benefits, obviously, to having essential workers that aren't human. Obviously, risk of exposure, yeah. it's a robot, they're not going to contract COVID, yes. be able to double time. Remember, we've had to make vaccines in mm. faster time periods. We've been able to uh, make sure that people get those vaccines and yes. fo at, you know, faster, faster than human hands can yeah. carry them. And that's why we've had uh, the this, this surge in robots that are filling in positions for us. So what are we calling them? Are we calling them nurses? Are they like robot nurses? And do they have names? Do they, do, how many of them would a hospital typically have? I'm trying to paint this picture in, in my <laughs> head. Here well, like, it depends. This is still, obviously this technology is still new. It's yeah. very expensive. I don't think we have much of that in South Africa just yet. You know, uh, we've got other things in our healthcare system that we need to put down as a foundational thing. Mm. But uh, overseas, there's, there's a lot of um, different roles that robots will fill. And that's where the names come in. Okay. So you firstly, I would say you get robot scientists. And these robot scientists... Um, will do things typically that you'd see like in a car manufacturing facility. Okay. You know, they're moving parts. They're moving parts. They're okay. moving stuff in and around the factories. They're moving, uh, they're doing, like when you do science tests, you've got to mix certain things. Yes. They're doing, they're programmed to do a lot of the mixing. We've had to do that at huge scale wow. and accurately. Uh, you know, when wow. you also up the scale and you add humans, it can be quite inaccurate sometimes. Yes. So you had to do that accurately so that we could obviously get like a vaccine out as fast as yes. possible. We could have scientists understanding the spread of COVID, what that, what that spread looks like. Mm. And these physical robots help with that. This is incredible. And I think especially when it comes to getting the vaccine out, because the whole world is suffering under the COVID-19 pandemic. And that means that we need to get so many people in the world vaccinated. I don't think we've got the human capacity to be able to do that as quickly and around the clock in all these different countries. Exactly. And because they can, robots can work around the clock, they're doing 4,000 tests a day each of wow. these robots. So that's a huge amount. And obviously all this lab work is, mm. is, is lab laborious. It's chemical mixing and that mm. kind of thing. And it's it's all measured. So it's actually the perfect industry they, for us to get into with robots. They're quite accurate, I imagine, because because they're programmed that they can't get it wrong necessarily. When you make coffee for me in the morning, I, I see it. I give you three sugars, sometimes oh, it's two, bad. sometimes it's bad. four, you know. But let's talk about a uh, robot custodian. What is a robot custodian? Um, before, let, let's, before we get there, let's yeah. just chat quickly about robot nurses. Okay, that's, that's, I mentioned that. Yeah, because yeah, they, you mentioned it and it follow, follows through. So mm. obviously the labs are working with these robot scientists, okay. but robot nurses are these uh, robots that can go into hospitals and uh, look after patients, yeah. be able to take stuff to patients without risk of exposure to the doctors necessarily. Wow. And when doctors are understaffed, yeah. look, healthcare workers are dying. We don't understand the impact of frontline workers who are dealing with a highly contagious, yeah. uh, lethal disease. Yeah. And, um, and obviously all of us uh, here on, on the show and like across the country, we respect mm. every single one of you in our country. And thank you very mm. much for all the hard work that you're doing to save our lives and put your life at risk. Yeah. And these robots are an example of uh, us trying to mitigate that risk to those people and those those essential workers that are on the front line. So a nurse that can roll through a, 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 a hospital at 24 hours a day, provide uh, food and uh, necessary uh, checkups for patients that yes. are that cannot breathe mm. without risk to the essential workers mm. can save essential workers' lives as well as the lives of their patients. It's incredible. Really I'm cool. very keen to find out, uh, Grant, how much of the functions of a, an ordinary human nurse, can these robot nurses do, or would they be able to do? Uh, would they do the more sort of, let's say, you know, uh, functional stuff, so like delivering food and making yes. sure that the medicine's placed in the right area, or? 
Yeah, I think, look, for, the, for right now, I think it's kind of chilled. Like, yeah. there's, there's not too chilled. much. It's there's chilled. Not, there's not too much, but obviously, the better that artificial intelligence gets, the better we can do this. Um, mm. The next thing is these robot custodians. Okay. They're actually controlled by, uh, by scientists All right. uh, or, or the doctors at the facility, and they use infrared to, to disinfect certain regions. So they can roll into an environment, disinfect that environment for essential workers to get in. So they prepare a space for uh, essential workers to go into. So there are all these great technologies that robots are able to contribute to yeah. with COVID. And, uh, uh, you know, hopefully we see like, um, you know, an arms race to improve our health. It's incredible. And I think that as the human race, we've come a really long way in that sense, that the ability to be able to create those uh, opportunities to be able to intervene where we need them most. And this is the time when they are most needed. What do you think of that? Can you imagine going for a COVID-19 test and it's a robot asking you to go, ah, so it throws in the thing. That is so interesting. Express or Morning Show, SABC3. I've been for two COVID tests. I can't imagine it being a robot, but that is so fascinating. Wow.